And, hey, uh, question real I, quick. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta interrupt you real quick. Why yeah. is it that the only team you called boys are the Australians? They're the Ripper boys. Every time you talk about them, River, no other team River is boys. the the um, the stinger. You said the stinger guys or the South African guys, the majestic men, <laughs> whatever. But it's the Ripper boys. Why? I don't. On behalf of your fans, I want to know how come you call them boys? Because Ripper they're boys. boys. They're 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 like they're like <laughs> kids. They're kids. They're they're little. They're big kids. You know they they don't take themselves too they, seriously. And that's the point right there. That's what I was getting yeah, at. Thanks for pointing that out. Now I'm going to call them the Ripper the Ripper mates. The Ripper mates. The, no, God, stay with boys. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's another episode of fairway to heaven this is a live golf podcast thank you so much for joining us it is your host jerry fultz and myself sue ann hang uh we are both part of the live golf broadcast team and uh why not spend a little bit more time together during the off season uh, by doing this podcast and hopefully you know what should entertain you guys uh keep you company on your drive or whatever you're doing that's a uh, while that's you're a fucking stretch this. that's a stretch right there yes Inter that's us stretch, entertaining yes. anybody that's a stretch absolutely yeah, yeah no well you're you will entertain today folks because you've had a few drinks uh you've played some golf no 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 i'm stone sober for now oh yeah 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 i, so, I had uh, a nap yeah i had to save some i, I couldn't that, overdo by the way it. that doesn't sober somebody up taking a nap like the alcohol still actually stays in your system for a while so no yeah. no it metabolizes yeah. quicker when you're sleeping it's factual it's got to be yeah and as uh, no, and as you've just pointed out you have two and a half in that big old mug of yours and you have another one on standby and somehow magically uh your fridge in your man cave has emptied out i mean i don't understand how that happened i mean that did, did your dog drink it did your it must, i mean did the raccoons yeah. come in and, and like raid your fridge i was like Psst. yeah this is it <laughs> we have a guy who's <laughs> uh who's doing a little work in the kitchen a little bit of remodeling work and he drinks mm -hmm. pretty much all day he has since become quite a good friend as well so i encourage it but if i don't have beer here for him then he's always in a hurry to get done and, and head home so he might not work as long or as hard but if I have beer here for him, he'll work like till midnight if need be, because it's a lot of work. He's got three more weeks to work still. So I think it was his fault. He ran out of his Bush Light, and now he's drinking my Miller Light. Bush, I think it was his fault. Yeah, it's it's such a Southern beer, such a redneck beer. It's awesome. I love a, it. It's but Bud Light, but cheaper. Bush Light. <laughs> it's better than a light Bush. I don't know. Everyone has their preferences. Anyway, uh, let's see what's what's been happening. All right. I mean, I, I guess one of the biggest uh, news that's been circulating the, the Twitter world Ooh. is the offseason oh. trades. Um, a lot of speculation, circles. and we will continue speculating uh, today. Uh, I just wanted to preface that we have zero idea what's going on. Uh, but according to a tweet... Uh, I mean, this is obviously understood. Ripper is staying together. I think Camp had already said that immediately yeah. um, after they won the team championships in a press conference. Crushers are staying together. We've got Torque, uh, who are also staying together. This one uh, might surprise most people. I think most people are surprised about this by the reactions that I've seen is the Majestics are apparently staying together again not sure how factual this is this is just um a discussion point uh from a tweet that i came across so um i think really just no surprises in any other than majestics i mean lee hendrick and pultz they're all co-captains and sam is playing some really good golf and i think they all get along great together um, Tarke, I mean, those guys are band of brothers. They're not going to split. Yeah. Those are the Rippers and so are the Crushers. So uh, I don't think it's any surprises there. Now, some changes. Uh, Fireballs basically announcing that uh, Fireballs GC will not be having uh, Eugenio come back. They're letting him go. Not offering him a contract, even though he finished in the open zone. Correct. Yes. Correct. And, and by the way, they are allowed to do that. Uh, for those that might not be as familiar, uh, this is Fultz's kind of zone uh but yes yeah, faulty so the, the the people in the <laughs> people in the open players in the open zone doesn't necessarily uh they're not 
necessarily secured a spot on the live golf league unless they have a contract correct yeah and that's the that's the uh, nature of being a league and it's still in its infancy is that there are contracts like any other sports league and if you know to get players to sign obviously there was always financial incentive for the bigger stars but there's also a guarantee you're going to be able to play this long and basically make this much money even if you suck so they're, if they are in the open zone and they have a league contract, that doesn't mean they're going to be on their team, but they will be within the league. If they don't, then they are, have zero guarantees. And we know that with a number of players right now, we're still waiting to hear what's going to happen to Cameron Tringali because I'm pretty sure that the, his contract expired this year. We haven't heard anything from their organization yet. I know negotiations are ongoing right now, but we haven't heard anything. Um, and we hear, we sometimes hear stuff before before the flushing its and the pro golf critics and those guys do. Sometimes we don't actually because we're not bugging our media side, our, our communication side as much as a lot of people who are true fans of live golf. But uh, when you get back to the majestic, see now I Sam Horsfield has an, a limitless potential, and he performed pretty well this year. After actually, the more the year went on, the better he played. But I had heard rumblings within the league, not within the Majestics, that he wasn't all that happy there. And so I, I'm, I'm really happy that they, that they, because you knew the three captains were coming back. Um, yeah. I'm really happy that they, that they're all going to be together because I think he's going to be, he doesn't have the resume of any of the other three, but he is going to be their, their A player next year, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, he had that surgery, I think the end of 2023. Uh, and then kind of took a while for him to get back into competition golf, as everyone would, uh, after a surgery, after injury. Uh, but yeah, towards the the, the end of, of the season, he certainly started trending in the right direction. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, and then apparently Cleeks is, uh, they're going to go with a full rebrand, Foltsy. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure if the name's going to stay, I'm not sure if the logo is going to stay, Um but uh, it is expected to have some kind of Scandi theme to the to the team, which then Scandi makes me theme. think: Are they going to potentially look at players? I mean, I I mean, I know a few pretty good Scandinavian golfers. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying. Somebody know. named Victor, perhaps. You never know. He's been rumored yeah. forever. And who's the other one that it has been rumored? Uh, uh, help me out, balls. You know, you can chime in. What about uh, Ludwig? Yeah, that's it. No, well, yeah, Ludwig, of course. Oberg, yeah. yeah. Oberg. How do you get Oberg out of that spelling? But yes. And he talks like he's from West Texas where he went to school. Um, well, the panhandle. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's interesting that, that they're going Scandi with a, with a German captain. And the stalwart of the team is an Englishman. I think they should. I think they should just name it the Blandemonium team. Seriously, I think that has legs. Bland has when you talk to him because I talked to him in uh, Dallas and in Chicago. He's like, you wouldn't believe the number of people that are out there and are like cheering him on for the old guys. He told us that on our. When, he's the only guy we had on twice, right, on the podcast. Yes. Yeah, we had him on twice after after his his um, first major win, I believe, but. Um, yeah, he said it's it's just he, he can't believe the popularity he has with the fans when he's playing in one of the Live Golf League events that he would have never enjoyed as a journeyman playing the European Tour, DP World Tour, as it is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, I've got to follow him a couple of times after he had won uh, his two senior majors, and I, I've said on the broadcast, you can feel so much love for Blandy. It's it's amazing. It's, it's and it's amazing. almost very. It's it's it really is um inspiring in many ways you know it's even being yeah. around it you can feel it you know and he's so yeah. he, he takes such a, a perspective of gratitude and you can feel it from blandy too so it is such a such a great thing i don't think he'll be leaving the cliques i think he'll forever be a cliques as he mentioned to us on the podcast uh, a few other things wild cards big question mark there i think you know apparently hud's time at live it, has come to an end unfortunately um apparently big word apparently i have no idea how true that is um his con I, i'm pretty sure his contract was up yes yes okay and then well, we've got and, anthony and kim had, as well it, which is the biggest question mark there's no chance on the earth i walk on or 
or sometimes stumble on that Anthony Kim is not playing with us next year. That's just my prediction. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, I agree. he has came back to the game after a 12 year absence. He has millions of people pulling for him for the plight mm -hmm. he's been through and for the game he once had that he shows signs of from time to time. The question is, does he end up as a wild card or on a team? That's the question. Or think, does he I have don't... his own team bolts? Ooh. Like the ooh. underdogs or something, you know? Maybe That's, he can see, get the three players from the promotions event or however many spots. Uh, I'm not too sure how many spots were given out, but I imagine that and just call them I think, underdogs. I, I, yeah, I, I honestly think, and we, we're going to talk about the promotions event soon, I'm sure, but I honestly think, we, and we don't know, if it's one, two, three, however many cards, but I think, uh, not cards, I'm sorry, I'm going to get in trouble. Pretty much spots. got fired for that because they're not cards. Spots. They're spots in the league. Yes, they're they're. We give them a coin. They get coins, um, that are designed by our jeweler to the stars, ben uh, Benny Balls, Ben Ballers. Now we got Benny we got Willie Balls, Ben Balls, Ball Baller. Sorry, Ben. Um, sorry, Ben. Sorry, Benny you. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cool. He wouldn't care. Yeah, um, he wouldn't care. But no, I think if we had a team, and even if it's owned by the league, there's no equity on any part of it. And it's guys who came through somehow qualified and played an entire season. Um, odds are, if they're guys, you know, journeyman pros who they're, they're going to get relegated like our promotees did from last year, and they'd be the underdogs. And how many people wouldn't be pulling for the underdogs and buying dogs merch and dog shirts and, and out there I just know. rooting for them? I think it'd be so I mean, cool. you can... I think you get a glimpse of the underdog um, support through the Ironheads at the team championship. I mean, people were like so pumped. I mean, I was pumped, nuts. You know, they were going nuts. nuts for him. Yeah. And it was and a million degrees that. in Dallas. I know. And everybody loves an underdog story. Let's just be honest. I do. You do. Right. Everybody all does. It. Everybody does. So who knows? Big question mark. Um, Unfortunately, underdog stories never equate to ratings, believe it or not. I don't know why, because everybody loves a story, but it never equates to ratings. Dominance does. Dominance. Dominance. Yeah. Like I'm tiger. checking to see, did all of our... No, we had... Uh, Kazuma did not finish in the relegation zone. The only one of the three promotees from last year who didn't. So, now yeah, that's another one that will be interesting. interesting. Is Kevin going to have him back? I, I would think, I would think after his performance at the team championship, how freaking clutch he was. He almost deserves to come back. I mean, like Kevin has to give him a spot. Surely, like after making those putts and like really taking the Ironheads into basically the finals. The thing is, when you talk to our fans, and I played with two of our biggest fans, big, Liv's biggest fans today, golf, mm -hmm. uh, pro golf critic and golf lover UK, Ben and Jamal. They have their own podcast, Golf, golf Lovers United. When you talk to folks in the know and folks who are just fans who really aren't in the know, they all realize there is a maybe a, not necessarily a void, but there is a there's a hole in our rust, in our membership that that could be filled in a in a massively influential way in the Asian market. And so I'm not sure how much of those decisions are Kevin Nas and how much the league is going to uh, be a part of the the makeup of that team or potentially another team. But yes, there's mm -hmm. there there's where well, we go to Asia four times next year, don't we? Well yeah. the schedule hadn't been officially released, but I think we're going four times to Asia. Well, Three the ones that anyway. have been announced are at least two. Singapore and Hong Kong. Yeah, at <laughs> yeah. least two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, and I mean, it yeah. would, I would think with Kevin and kind of his roots into his the Korean culture, it wouldn't surprise me if the Ironheads will end up being an all-Asian team. Uh, yes. Whether that comprises of Japanese, Koreans, Chinese, who knows, right? Um, but I could see it being... The Ironheads uh, being the the all Asian team. Yeah, well, and it can be Asian Americans as well. It's their yeah, 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 it's yeah. A, yeah, of Asian descent. Yeah. Uh, but Cam Smith. Let's talk about Camo. Why he wouldn't came you? out. Uh, yeah, why wouldn't you? Uh, came out uh, in an interview with the Herald Sun saying that 
his decision to leave was the best decision of his life, uh, leaving as in coming to the Lip Golf League. Um, he says, not only from where the league is going, but where it will end up. Uh, but also from a life standpoint as well. The extra time I get to spend in Australia compared to what I used to means a lot. I feel like I am a happier person now compared to when I was before. Um, by the way, just to remind everybody, he was world number two when he left to come over to the to the Live Golf League uh, to come join us and be a captain yes. of Ripper GC. Uh, yes. He's won six times on the PGA Tour. Um Including but a yes, player obviously. Open. Yeah, he has obviously no regrets, especially after the team championship. He's going to spend, he's already in Australia, um, as I have found out. And he's going to be playing, let's see, one, two, three, four events, I think, as of now, um, in Australia, Queensland PGA, New South Wales Open, the Australian PGA, as well as the Australian Open. I played all those events 34 years ago. Holy shit. 1988, That's I played all those, all those four events. Yeah. And but Fuck 1988 is 36 years ago. Just okay. 36. <laughs> Keep <him> drinking, folks. <laughs> Actually, you were born in 88, weren't you? That's exactly why I was like, Holy I'm not shit. 34. Wow. I'm distracted by Golden <laughs> Bachelorette. I'm sorry. I can't open my. You know what's cool when you when you talk about Cam and his comments about live golf is that's not uh, one that's not just him. Every single player mm. who's joined Live has said the same thing. There have been zero regrets, even though you know the anti Live campaign that's out there, the smear campaign, as Graham McDowell famously, regretfully in his mind once called it. They don't want to think that's genuine uh, sentiment on behalf of those players. Mm -hmm. It actually is. They they love it out there. They love their life now. They love the time they get off. They love the fact that now doors are opening. If they want to play a little bit here and they want to play a little bit there, they can still. Obviously, the doors are shut in America on the PJ Tour. But that mm -hmm. is that is so cool. That is that that yeah. I think says everything about it. And you don't hear from the other side. I know there's two sides still. Although hopefully something is done soon that mm -hmm. kind of helps bring it back together. I don't I don't I don't know how quickly that brings the the public sentiment back together, but. Uh, but the other side doesn't talk like that. There's, there's, yeah. they, they, they there's a, there's a vendetta still. And it, it, I, yeah. I love the fact that our guys are that happy because they do like yeah. Justine, like Justine Reed said, I've never seen my husband's teeth this often in since I've <laughs> known him and he's smiling yeah. all the time. He's so damn happy. And he hadn't even won yet. And he's that happy. I know. And he's a golf I know. nerd. I know. It's a great, it's a great, um, statement from from justine and i think that one of the i would say one of the big positives of them coming over to the live golf league as i've spoken to a lot of players especially who are international players who are able to play and support their events in their respective countries yeah. Um, yeah. And that is really how you do grow the game of golf um, in your country is to go home, especially if you're a big name like Cam, to play there, to attract a crowd, to attract junior golfers, to attract and and, uh, and really just when they were playing on the PGA Tour, they just couldn't have time. They didn't have time to go over, you know, because right now they don't have an off season, right? They're playing through the end of the year. And so a lot of them choose not to fly all the way back from the U S to Australia, which is a long way and play there and then fly all the way back to then play the PGA yeah. again. No, Jason, so the fact Jason that, like, Day yeah, is one of the, I, I love Jason. I know him well. I love him. I love the mm -hmm. guy. He's a, he's a, he's a phenomenal human being, but the, he's not popular in Australia anymore because he doesn't go back and play their events. And yeah. for the longest time, a lot of the Australians did. And I know leash would always try um i know jonesy would always try but a lot of times jonesy was in a category where he had to he had to play in the fall in america yeah um yeah. and cam would go back there he he was more dedicated than any of them but he always wanted to go back and support and yes. and, and it dates back to our commissioner um greg norman who always played even at at his peak when he was commanding appearance fees worldwide he would go mm -hmm. back and play sometimes even piddly events in australia when yeah. he was number one in the world because it mattered to him um, yeah. and it matters to cam and that, that speaks volumes for him and the entire team i know herbie's passionate about yeah. that too herbie while well, herbie's also playing um 
in four events as well. He's playing the New South Wales Open. He's going to play the Australian PGA, the uh, Australian Open, and he's going to play the WebEx Players Series, Murray River. Um, so What's that? I don't know. That's a great question. Um, I guess we will find out. Uh, Murray but, River. I don't even know where that's yeah, at. Yeah, Murray River. Um, actually, that's... It you lived like in Australia, but you lived in Perth. I yeah, I did. Yeah, that yeah. is Australia. My favorite city in the world. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. Um, but anyways, you know, my point is, and, and I know just spending time with the River Boys, they're very passionate about it. They're very passionate about being home and playing at home. And it yeah. matters to them so much, more than people will ever give them credit for. Um, even the South African guys, you know, they're able to play at home a little bit more. Um I mean, you see well, guys yeah, and, like... and win basically everything on their tour in, in the off season, <laughs> like they did last year. <laughs> Correct. And, hey, question, uh, real quick. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta interrupt you real quick. Why yeah. is it that the only team you called boys are the Australians? They're the Ripper boys. Every time you talk about them, River, no other team the is boys. the the, um, the stinger. You said the stinger guys or the South African guys, the majestic men. <laughs> Whatever, but it's the Ripper Boys. Why? I don't. I, I'm, I don't know. I, on behalf That's of your I, I, fans, I want to know how come you call them boys. You know, I don't know. I mean, I I, I feel like they're You're my blushing a little bit. I feel like <laughs> they're because I never really realized that that's what I say. Um, yeah, I don't Ripper know. Boys. I feel like I really you say it on the air them. all the time. The Ripper Do Boys. I? The Ripper Boys. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know. I relate to them, and and you know, I. Australia is very close to my heart and um is... but uh yeah I don't know Come on. I don't boys. know because Ripper they're boys. boys they're 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 like they're like <laughs> kids they're kids they're they're little the big kids you know they they don't take themselves too they, seriously and that's the point right there that's what I was getting yeah. at they do they 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 they're they just, just big don't... kids they're just big kids yeah with yeah. with bigger toys now because and, they and can bigger wallets. Um, yes, but, which yeah. pays for the big toys, which is why yes. why they are kind of vacationing right now, and they do all that crap together. Everything they do, yes. they do together, which is so yes, cool. Yes, they do. Uh, they genuinely um, yeah, I never like really each other. Really noticed that. There you go. Thanks for pointing yeah. that out. Now oh. I'm going to call them the rip the rip of mates. The rip of mates. <laughs> no, God, stay with boys. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, we're going back to to kind of. Blair is having that time to go back. I mean, you look at Thomas Peters, who we spoke to a couple of weeks ago. He's at home and he's able to spend more time to grow the game. Yeah. He's trying to do the yeah. things to help grow the junior golf uh, there. And you can, you can tell by his passion about how uh, he wants to grow the game in Belgium, right? Uh, you look at uh, Adrian Moronk. He is now um, back home, right? I just saw a post of him doing some stuff with the junior golfers there as well. Um, in Poland? So, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's in cold. October. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I don't know how long, whether that was a post from a while ago, but I know he's back there. Let's talk about an international series, shall we? Uh, because we're right smack in the middle of the international series season. Uh, really cool. Bubba just announced that he will be playing at the BNI uh, Indo Masters, which is happening next week. Uh, that is part of the series. international series. How cool is that? I mean, for really cool. golf in Indonesia to have Bubba Watson, yeah. that's pretty yes. awesome. Very cool. Really Very cool. cool. Uh, this week, uh, they are in Thailand for the second week in a row. Last week, they played at Black Mountain in Hua Hin. This week, it's Thai Country Club. Um, some names that will be there from the Lip Golf League, Peter Uline, Brendan Grace is playing in it, uh, the Vincent Brothers, Ben Campbell, Wade Ormsby, uh, all will be there uh, playing. Uh, obviously, you got the leader of the International Series ranking, John Catlin, who John Catlin. lost in a playoff last week at Black Mountain. I saw that, yeah. Against Michael McGuire, who won for the very first time. Uh, this was Who, what in a now, it was a two hole playoff. It was a two hole playoff. Yeah, I watched the the nine hole playoff on the European tour, which was a lot of fun. Um, it actually was fun to watch because I knew one of the commentators, and he, they, they, they the other commentators just wanted to go, and so did he. But they, you know, <laughs> us as commentators, if granted, if it's Bryson and Brooks or DJ or Cam or Phil or somebody in a playoff, you're you're into the action. 
But if it's two guys who aren't necessarily stars, mm -hmm. they just want it to get the fuck over with. I mean, yeah. as common as TV people, you just want to go. Yeah. You want to go home. Yeah. You want to go to the bar. You yeah. want to go wherever. And yeah. uh, and it just kept going and going and going. <laughs> Nine holes. Nine holes tied their record. It was awesome. But I saw <laughs> I saw today, uh, yesterday, actually, that Catlin had lost in a playoff. Now, yeah. let's, let's, uh, let's get off the headlines for a sec. If he maintains his number one position, he obviously gets a spot into live golf. Mm -hmm. That is primarily. That is the primary pathway. I mean, we have our promotion event. But yes. the primary pathway is the international series, and and yes. then and getting a spot in the international series is becoming way more coveted than a lot of other tours in the world. Yes, um, if he does maintain that number one spot, and it looks like he will, but it's not a guarantee yet. Where does he end mm -hmm. up? Who has he's, the open he's, spot? Okay, for so him? he's eight ten, uh, uh, eight hundred and ten point eight three. Ben Campbell's next at five twenty six point eight three is what yeah. I wrote. Um, so I think so that's a win. I think that's a win and a half, though. I think I think I think he's at least a win clear of of getting yeah, that of keeping that normal yeah. spot. Yeah. yeah. Um, but where does where does Catlin end up? Do you think that's the that's the million dollar question? Who has a spate? Who has a spot that hasn't filled it already? Where does he end up? Well, look, he was picked a lot, a lot this yes. season, uh, this past season uh, as a reserve uh, by does a lot Rom of teams. Take him. In does Rom take him as his fourth, or does mm. he is or is he is he going? We've heard rumors of of players he might be shopping around. Um, yeah. Does Rom take him? Um, I don't know. Does, Bryson don't doesn't know. have room for him. I, no, I Bryson think doesn't everybody's have room coming for back him. there. That's not official yet, but I think uh, everybody's coming back on that team. I mean, there's many. I mean, I mean, who knows if Anthony does end up having an underdogs team? <laughs> who knows? No, if, oh. You, do you think we'll have another team? Do you think we'll have 14? I don't know. I don't know. I don't either. I, I was asked happening. that today. I mean, we we didn't see that coming into this year. Uh, no, you know, but we have room, for, we have room year, for at least two more. Yeah. I know. So this time last year, we were more. like, predict there's just going to be 12 teams. Da, 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 and suddenly, boom, John Rump's coming. He's got his own team. And then suddenly Terrell's coming. Uh, it all happened really quickly, which I feel will likely happen this year in terms of the cadence of how th that happens. Um, who knows? I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all, um, you know, judging by well, the last year. There's Gracie and Bubba, and they're both, uh, they're both relegated. Mm -hmm. um, we do not officially know if, we know there's a pathway back for both of them. If the range goats as an organization after the promotion event have a spot, if there, if, if, the, if there's still a spot in the league, they can, as an organization with Bubba as one of the voting principals, but only one vote, uh, vote mm -hmm. him back onto the team. I don't see a world where that doesn't happen. I just don't yeah. see a live golf league where that doesn't happen. Yeah. Gracie is has to is playing in the promotion event. If he wins it, it's a done deal. He's back. Well, on he's the, playing I, this I think week. he's back on the, yeah, I know, but he's playing the promotion of it. It's a done deal. If I think I think the Stingers are going to hold that spot for him, and if he doesn't make it, and there's still a spot available, I understand not officially, but I understand there is a there is a there is a mechanism within our organization where they can then reach out to anybody they want to sign him, even a guy like who was relegated. I don't see a world where Brandon Grace isn't a stinger. I just don't see that. But it could happen. It could easily happen within our organization right now, within our league. Well, I mean, especially as I was about to say, the way he's been playing. Uh, he's he he's Brandon he's, Grace. I know, but he found his form. I mean, uh, yes. what he shot at the where was he? Uh, well, he played in Dallas. I know it wasn't a stroke play event, but he was like six, seven under or something ridiculous yeah. on that um, fucking course. Holy shit. On that, that was course. Tough, tough and then course. I think at the Dunhill, he played the Dunhill, right? Yeah. And he, he I think he I shot a low around there too. So, you know, I mean, he's, he's found, he's found the guy with was cutter. the first guy to, to, to break 63 in a major championship for Christ's sakes. The guy is a stud. He just had a really bad year with a putter. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, speaking of our promotions event, though, uh, as you said, obviously, uh, pathway into the Live Golf League, the 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 winner of the international series ranking gets a spot, but at the same time, the guys behind, right, uh, on that money list on the rankings, 
it's not just for that one spot, but it's also to get into the promotions of it, to have right. a second chance at getting onto the Live Golf League. Uh, right. The higher up you go in the international series, the more, I guess, stages you skipped um, during yeah. our promotions event. So if you're like top 10, you get to go on, I think, to the next day. You, you skip the first day. Right. And vice versa. So that's huge. I mean, that's still incentive. So, you know, it's not like, they, it's not like oh, if I'm fucking second, I can just throw the towel in or whatever. You know, I mean, first of all, there's a lot of money to be played for. Um, but that's, also... That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing that's brushed over with the International Series. That's not... The Asian tour used to be a place where you go to cut your teeth and to hopefully progress through, you know, to where you get a chance to to move on and you're good enough. You make a little bit of money, not a lot of money, and you go and you and you get your card eventually on the DP World Tour yeah. or the PGA Tour. Now it's a place where you're not only paying the bills, you're you're actually stockpiling some money. The International Series is very profitable for the guys playing. Yeah. And that's all yeah. thanks to, of course, PIF's involvement. Um, yeah. If nothing changes in the amongst the governing bodies of professional golf, be it, you know, live PGA tour, DP world tour, blah, 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 blah. And if nothing changes, that is emerging to be, it will eventually be, if not already the second best tour in the world mm -hmm. uh, for a tour, as opposed to a league. Obviously we think live golf is the number one thing there is yeah. on the globe and always right. will. We believe it, not just because they, they pay us to, to, uh, to commentate for them. Um, we wouldn't be there if we didn't. The International Series, which is run by the Asian Tour, uh, they like their own identity, uh, absent the Asian Tour, but um, that is, that's emerging to be one of the premier tours in the world and, and should be. Uh, now, we don't, I don't give a shit what the OWGR says about it because the PGA mm -hmm. Tour basically controls what they say right now. Um, and you can argue that all you want, but that's the truth. Nobody right. will deny that's the truth, even no matter how much they argue it. But um, that that is emerging to be the second, maybe going to be the second most competitive tour in the world in the years to come, if nothing changes from the current status. I guess some players who will be trying to fight their way back into the Live Golf League through the International Series are the Vincent brothers. I spoke to Scotty, um, well, a team, uh, one of physios or, or coaches on scotty's team and scott basically vincent, saying of... scott vincent yeah scott vincent yes yeah. um that he's treating af like after dallas this was during the week of dallas and i spoke to them but after dallas he's going to treat this as a fresh season um from from the the end of dallas to the end of this season to end of this year on the international series and he's going to reset and he's going to treat it like a brand new season and try to just play as well as he can to potentially get back right yeah so he's his mindset's that um and and look he he's capable he's, of it <laughs> he has been our success story since day one who got yes. into our very first event based on his win the week before in yes. england on the international series and he he played out there every event for three years that's yeah. pretty fucking cool and that yeah. was a lot of money he made. A lot of money he made in those three years. Yes. Um, yes. Whether or not he ever gets back or not, it, 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 is what, it, is, it will be the success story that young people chase in years to come. Is the story I tell you what, he's got the, he's got the best attitude. One of, he's got, really yeah. one of the best. He's got he's one got, of the best attitudes to get back. So. Yes. And he's got, yeah. uh, as they say in Spain, huevos. Yes. He's got... He's got huevos. I was going to do something. Mm, grande. Grande <laughs> huevos. <laughs> Can you actually say vente huevos? Vente? Bent, it'd be vente, depending vente. on which. No, well, it's a, it's a yeah. Starbucks thing, right? Grande, tall, grande, vente. Yeah, vente. Yeah. Um, if the Mexican Spanish is vente. I don't know about Spain or, or, or the Portuguese pronunciation. Big is what v, you're saying. But, um, huge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bente Wavos. <laughs> the guy plays with serious guts, is what I'm saying. He plays with yeah. serious guts and self belief that yeah. a guy of his of his of his pedigree coming into live, you would have never expected. And it's just it was awesome to watch.
it's been yeah, awesome to it watch. Was awesome. Yeah. It, it, yeah and he's got like i said he's, he's just got a, an amazing amazing attitude all he cares about mm -hmm. honestly is to get better that's yeah. his entire focus is to just keep yeah. getting better every single day yeah. every single day amazing bit by bit. family amazing yeah. everything his <laughs> wife his, his child yeah. his parent they're just they're just such solid people they just From, celebrated uh, their sixth year anniversary, I believe. Him and oh, Jesse. really? So, yeah. Happy anniversary, you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, look, we started this podcast uh, without knowing what the hell we wanted to talk about. Um, Is this our first guestless one? No, we did one in, where were we? Was it Dallas that we did one? Was yeah, it was Dallas. Remember when we sat there for 20 minutes? We just sh shot the shits for, about the individual championship. Yeah. Yeah, but this yeah, is yeah. the root of this podcast. The you and I talking is the root of this podcast. To the people who are still listening, and God knows why, the entire idea of this podcast came from our original car ride to the golf course together, where literally they could have yes. put a POV camera on the rearview mirror, and <laughs> it would have had to we'll been edited be heavily here, though. <laughs> for content. Yes, it would have been he heavily edited for content and language, but... It was so much fun. So that's, I was looking forward to this one more than pretty much anyone we've done. Yeah, we should do this more. I mean, I don't know, but that, that are, I mean, people that tune in might be like, oh, there's no guest. Fuck this. <laughs> well, we happen to have a built in uh, list of superstar golfers that we can call on. Uh, mm -hmm. It just so happened the schedules didn't work out for any of them this week. But yeah, yes. it's, yeah. Uh, this is more fun for me. I'm really interested to see. Um, the crowds in Indonesia, um, with Bubba being there, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they love golf there, um, you know. And how often are you going to get, you know, a major champion there? You know, it's like the what are the chances champion, of having yeah. Bubba in Indonesia? Yeah. I don't know if you've been to Indonesia, but it's far from where he's from. <laughs> and it's, it's far hot. from baghdad florida yes yes it's hot yeah. there's a lot of traffic um you know so i think it is really cool um i i am curious as to why he decided to play that one you know i mean there's so many uh coming you know, there's obviously the last two that were in thailand uh, i believe they still have a bunch more to play um you know i wonder why indonesia uh, we'll find out maybe i can find out somehow somewhere um but they're gonna love it yeah yeah, no, you know what, <laughs> Bubba, <laughs> Bubba's so he's so funny at times when he does travel internationally because you know he didn't. Uh, we both love Bubba. Everybody loves mm -hmm. Bubba. Yeah, how do you not? But he didn't pass up medical school to be a to be a pro golfer. There's there's just no getting around that. He's yeah. he is a simple man with and a much much more intelligent man than he gets credit for. Much more intelligent than he gets credit for. But he's a simple guy. He calls it as he sees it. He doesn't pull any punches with anybody. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. And he's a simple guy. And when he travels internationally without being the most, you know, the the, the guy who is the most well read, uh, as you as you would say, um, from a from a golfer standpoint, which most of them are single minded about one thing. You know, they mm -hmm. study what have you and follow their hobbies. But the, their 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 main goal is to play the best golf they can. When he travels internationally, he grows every single time. And I, I've seen yeah. it. I've known him since he first since he first came out of college at University of Georgia to the Corn Ferry Tour. And he grows as a person uh, every single time. And he relishes that chance to go to new places and learn about them. And it, does anybody do more off the course to 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 get into the community and learn more than than Bubba? Does anybody? I, I can't think of anybody else in, in golf, mm -hmm. not just in live, but in golf. Who, yeah. who does who he doesn't have any vices he doesn't have any bad habits you know he doesn't yeah he doesn't do anything that's ever going to get him in trouble and yeah. and he'll go and he'll he'll take his spare time and go learn and go and go visit Rap. and go make appearances and and just and just chill with people and it's yeah. it's so cool it's so damn yeah. cool yeah um yeah. something tells me though folks that um i don't think he'll be trying any of the uh local delights like the um no insects right insects the nasi gorings and i don't know 
if Indonesia does insects, but they have amazing food. Oh my god! What are what are some so balls and nasi? Some ball is like a it's it's a generic. It's like saying hot sauce in America. Yeah. Some ball is a combination of some sort of usually obviously chilies, red chilies, yeah. um, and then you've got uh shallots or onions you have green onions okay so it's it's just a, it's yeah. a hot sauce and then they and then they, they it, it sounded a little it sounded a little a little wrong Sam sambal oh sambal is so good if anyone who's listening to this podcast who's from asia or have experience being asia sambal is so good it puts hot it, it sounded like shape. rocky mountain oysters <laughs> is what it sounded like <laughs> it's and then they have nasi Sambals. goreng which is amazing um, which is what it's like a it's fried rice indonesian style and it comes with like satay and it comes with a, a side of vegetable that's cooked in this amazing like chili concoction uh it's like a plate a beautiful platter of just different flavors and different foods um so you get it's a like taste a spicy of... paella no no so you get it served if you if you google it, it's like rice and it's got like one, two, three, four little things on. Oh there. yeah, like, like Asia around does. the rice. Yeah, you get yeah. eighteen different dishes at your table. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so good, and they have so much great food. But I don't think he'll be trying any of that uh, as he's no, he's going to have on the broadcast. He's spaghetti, spaghetti bolognese and French fries. Spaghetti bolognese every single night with French fries, and still looks like a twig. I don't know. I don't understand I know. how he eats that shitty. Still looks like that. I don't know. He actually hasn't been. Uh, actually, this entire year, he's worked really hard with his team on eating better. He's actually lost a lot of weight. I think he's lost some 25 pounds or 30 pounds of some sort. He doesn't have that to lose. But yeah, apparently he's been like eating better. He's trying to find ways to, you know, uh, get more energy. He's working out. He's he, this year was like a big changer for him like he's training mm. differently um so he's obviously still very passionate about playing great golf yeah. so <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in <laughs> to fair to heaven and choosing us uh as your podcast this week we appreciate you thanks for listening thanks for supporting us uh if you do like this podcast please do share it with your friends uh and uh, yes please do subscribe we're on uh blah, blah, blah. we're on the live golf blah, blah, blah. youtube page <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can find all the episodes there uh, if you missed any of them uh, we have a whole archive of fantastic guests uh, that you can scroll through and pick your poison uh, also we do have our very own social pages at fdh underscore live golf we're on the x we're on the, uh, tiktok and we're on instagram so please do follow us there uh, and you can find us wherever you get your podcasts, whether it's Apple or Spotify or wherever you consume your podcasts. So uh, this is us this week. Uh, that's it. That's all she wrote. <laughs>